Good morning, everyone. Hope you're all having a wonderful day today. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at the Plan B system for attaching a suppressor, specifically the Reardon Plan B, which is actually my Plan A, which actually means something else in another context. Now, full disclosure on the Reardon muscle devices and adapters that I've had, I don't have any relationship with Reardon whatsoever. I'm not a dealer for them, though I probably should be. I personally own about 10 Reardon muzzle devices, one adapter, and then a very kind follower of the channel sent me the Pure Performance Armory Castle Cap, which is a Titanium Plan B adapter. And I should probably get set up as a dealer for Reardon. As I mentioned, I own about a dozen of their muzzle devices, and this week alone, I'm installing five of them on customers' uppers. So I should probably look into that. I've been using Plan B nearly exclusively for the last four months or so, so you've basically seen it in every video that I've published, and my round count currently is somewhere between three and 5,000 rounds through probably a dozen different guns and two different suppressors. Now, for those of you who don't know, I believe the Plan B was originally designed by Q, and since then, about a half dozen different manufacturers have been making adapters and muzzle devices for it. Uh, a quick note is that Q is not necessarily a fan of some of these aftermarket adapters, so if you use them with a Q suppressor, I believe it voids the warranty. As of yet, I haven't had an issue, but Q is a little bit protective about their stuff. Now, before we get into the ins and outs, general performance, point of impact shift, so on and so forth on the Reardon Plan B, I should shout out my channel sponsors. The biggest one is probably Callaway Ballistics for sending me ammunition, which is, of course, my largest expenditure on the channel. Let's go ahead and check them out. Use code FOCUS to get free shipping on orders over $200. And the second is going to be Optics Planet. They send me gear to review for free. And if you use code FOCUS, you can again save 7% on anything at Optics Planet. That is not an affiliate code. Neither of the codes are an affiliate. I don't make anything from them. They just show support for my sponsors and help you guys out. Alrighty, so here we have our YHM cams. This is the Resonator K and the Turbo K and a whole host of Reardon muzzle devices. Now up top, of course, we have all of the cans that I've been doing testing with, so you do have to keep in mind that your cans, your adapters, are going to perform a little bit different. And then of course we have all of the Reardon mounts that I've been using. I have used more than this, but this is just the ones that I have on hand currently. Now starting off with exactly how these muzzle devices operate with the Plan B adapters is it's incredibly complex. So you have a taper up front, and then you have threads behind that thread the suppressors down onto the taper. And that's it. Now this is the YHM Turbo Case. This is of course the 556K can. On the back we have the Reardon Atlas Adapter, which is kind of their standard adapter. You can go with aftermarket ones or a variety of other adapters on the market for different cans, thread patterns, so on and so forth. But this is their most standard size. As you can tell, adds about a half inch in terms of total length. Weighs about, I believe, two and a half to three ounces made out of 17-4 and of course nitrided. Now, this is very simple. We have a internal taper and internal threads that match up to your external taper and your external threads. So of course you simply screw them together and then the internal taper on the Atlas adapter will match up with the external taper on, in this case, one of their three prong flash hiders and that's about it. Now, of course you wanna get it a little bit tighter than I did on here. You just go a little bit overhand tight on your muzzle devices and that is going to lock it up very securely. Now, of course, there are aftermarket adapters as well that work exactly the same. You have an internal taper and threads. Now, this one here, this is a pure performance armory castle cap, which is actually made out of titanium and of course adds almost nothing to the length on the YHM Resonator K or Turbo K. You can use it on either one. And again, comes in right at one ounce. Now it is a little bit more expensive. I think these were like 130 bucks or something, but for a very lightweight, very short adapter, they work nice. Now, of course, exact same mounting solution. This is the exact same flash hider as that one, but in a heat treated finish, not a nitride. I will talk about the heat treated finish a little bit later on, but it does not uh, hold up quite as well as of course the nitride will. Now talking about the mini three prong flash hiders, we have of course just the heat treated version and the nitrided version. They're both made out of 17.4. These are of course both half by 28 though the one on the 6.5 Creed here, this is 5.8 by 24. Other than that, they are of course identical. Now, the main difference between these two is of course their coating. The heat treated version is a little bit cheaper. The nitrated version holds up a little bit better. It doesn't get the same level of crust and gunk on it as fast as the heat treated versions do, but it is of course a little bit more expensive. And they also say that the matchup on the nitrated versions is a little bit tighter. Uh, in effect, what that means is that the K 
cans can be a little bit harder to separate, but other than that, they're very similar. Again, there is a few dollars difference in terms of price. I personally like the look of the heat treated, but in just terms of raw performance, heat resistance, lubricity, that sort of thing, I think the nitride is a little bit better. Now, again, the heat treated versions that I have down here, they do tend to be a lot more sticky when it comes to carbon, not as slick as the nitride versions. For instance, this is on a 14 and a half inch 308. This muscle device only has about 30 rounds on it and it's already completely coated. Now you can tell how well the taper system works because behind the taper, everything is perfect. And then right in front of the taper, it's just completely coated. Now this only has 30 rounds on it. The rest of these have hundreds of rounds on it, including this one, but this one here is of course the worst on a 5.56. We'll talk about that just in just a minute. But again, the nitride versions do hold up a lot better in terms of resisting carbon buildup and such. Now here, this is the dual port brake, the DPB, because it has two ports. It is 5 8 by 24 with again, the exact same mounting system as the rest. This is the SPB, the single port brake, which works quite well. In terms of recoil reduction, the dual port brake acts like a much more standard muzzle or muzzle brake. And the single port brake does do a little bit of recoil reduction, but it's not anything drastic. Now the three prong flash hiders, this is a 5 8 by 24. This is a half by 28, 5 5 6. They do work as far as flash reduction goes. They do have a tiny, tiny bit of pinging noise that you probably won't notice. I didn't notice it while shooting. However, in the recording, you can hear it for maybe a quarter second or so. So there is a little bit of pinging noise on the three prong flash hiders, though again, when you're actually shooting, I didn't notice it. They do work well enough when it comes to flash hiding and they're very small, they're very lightweight. They're about the same length as an A2 flash hider, probably about the same weight, plus or minus a half ounce or so. They also happen to be the cheapest as well. Sometimes you can find them in the low $50 range or sometimes a little bit under $50. Again, the heat treated versions are usually five to $10 cheaper than the nitrated versions. Now, the last one that we have here, this is the R2C, which is a longer flash hider. This one here, you can actually pin and weld on a 14.5 if you have a drill press to drill it out. And this one here is closed on the bottom. They have the R2C, which is closed. Now they have the R2S, which is, I, I believe the exact same thing, but about a half inch shorter. And then they have the R2, which is exactly like this, but it has ports all the way around like a A1 flash hider. Now, when it comes to actual suppression, the single port brakes and dual port brakes kind of act like blast baffles or sacrificial baffles. They do increase your back pressure a little bit because they start that gas flowing quite a bit faster. The dual port brake is probably the most egregious in terms of back pressure increasement, but it also probably helps to cut off a little bit of decibels on the top end, maybe one or two. Now, of course, the main advantage of the smaller muzzle devices is that they're, of course, smaller, lighter, take up less space. So if you're using a suppressor that has a very short blast baffle, these can work quite well. Now the Turbo K has about two and a half inches before the first baffle and the Resonator K has almost three inches before the first baffle. So you can use these with pretty long muzzle devices, especially if you're using a little bit longer of an adapter. Of course, using a shorter adapter like the Pure Performance Armory, uh, this one here is going to not be quite as forgiving when it comes to uber long muzzle devices. Now, if you're going to be running these muzzle devices on a dedicated suppressed build, something that's only ever going to be shot suppressed, then I would probably recommend either the single port brakes or the three prong flash hiders, as again, they are the smallest and the lightest with the exact same lockup, which is very good. Now, if you're looking at more of a dual purpose device and you don't want to deal with the ringing sound of the short three prong flash hiders, then the R2C is fantastic. Again, basically an extended A2 closed off at the bottom and the dual port brake is actually quite effective at taming recoil. So again, if you need something that's a little bit more hybrid, you can do a couple different things. The longer muzzle devices make a little bit more sense. And if you're willing to, again, live with the little bit of ringing noise, the three prong flash hiders are incredibly small, lightweight. And again, the mounting is the same on all of them. Now, another huge advantage of the Plan B system is that you can get muzzle devices from a wide variety of manufacturers, Q, Liberty Precision Machine, and a couple others, I believe as well, that all work with the Plan B system. So very inexpensive adapters, very inexpensive muzzle devices, very small trim, lightweight, and the lockup on the suppressors, most importantly, is very good. So not only do you have a huge variety of muzzle devices to choose from, but again, they all have the exact same lockup and should in theory 
provide a very good, very stable mounting platform for your suppressors. So really the only thing on the market that's lighter and smaller than the Plan B system is going to be direct thread. Now direct thread for a 100% suppressed gun that you never wanna switch off, that you're willing to trade off the versatility of a semi QD system like Plan B, if that's worth it for you, perfectly fine. That is going to be the smallest, lightest way. Use rock set, use high temperature thread locker with some performance or some precision shims and you should be good to go. Now, other than that, if you want a little bit more versatility, you do want, you have a lot of different guns that you want to use different suppressors on, then of course, something like Plan B is probably the most cost effective and the most size and weight efficient as well. Now, getting into some of the additional testing that we did, in terms of round count, I've owned the Reardon Plan B system through about 10 different muzzle devices for the last three or four months and more than a dozen videos. So the round count is somewhere between three and 5,000. And again, throughout the entire time that I've used them on a multitude of muzzle devices and hosts, I have never had one of my suppressors come loose. So as far as lockup goes, it does seem to be perfect, just keep in mind that you need to torque it down appropriately by hand. And there is gonna be some variation between adapter and muzzle device, because again, you can get a wide variety of adapters and muzzle devices from different companies, so your mileage may vary. Now, getting into our POI shift testing, I used two different guns, one of them being a PSA Saber with a 16 inch 5.56 barrel from FN. It's just a standard 16 inch mid length barrel with a government profile. It is definitely a little bit older. And the other was the CAC 139 7.62 by 39 that they built out kind of specifically for me. Now keep in mind that everything that touches the barrel on the suppressor can influence your POI shift. So your barrels, your muzzle devices, your adapters, your suppressors are going to vary the results a little bit. So those are the two barrels that I was using. As far as the muzzle devices go, I was using a short three prong flash hider on the 16 inch saber. I was using the single port brake on the 7.62 by 39. On top of that, on the 7.62 by 39, I was using the pure performance armory castle cap, which is the titanium very short one on the resonator K. Now on the 16 inch Sabre, I was using the standard Atlas Plan B adapter and of course the Turbo K. So now with the setups out of the way, let's go ahead and see how they performed. And on the 16 inch saber with the three prong flash hider and Atlas plan B adapter on the turbo K, we saw basically no point of impact shift and no accuracy degradation. Now, one note about the 7.62 by 39 is that I was using PMC bronze 123 grain, which as far as I'm concerned is awful. I had nothing but problems with that ammo in terms of just accuracy. I was only doing this at about 60, 70 yards or so and the accuracy was not very good, and on top of that, it kind of just gave me random flyers. That being said, it did appear that there was a small point of impact shift up when the suppressor was removed, and then right back down to zeroed, essentially, when the suppressor was reinstalled. Now, to quickly compare the Plan B system to the old system that I was running, this is, of course, the older YHM lineup with some of their longer devices, some of their muzzle brakes, some of their shorter ones as well. All have varying degrees of rust and corrosion on them. I did use these exclusively for some time and unfortunately came to the realization that they suck. Not only are the muzzle devices in general much bigger, larger, and heavier, and of course the adapters are longer. Now you of course have the K adapters as well, which are shorter. Again, you do need to watch the short K combination with some of your longer muzzle devices, depending on how large the blast chamber is on your suppressor. Again, just in general, even if you're using the smallest, lightest YHM adapters and mounts, it's still gonna be bigger and heavier than the reared in plan B or almost any plan B system. Now, another problem with the YHM is that they are way more complex. They have a locking ring on the muzzle device with a bunch of springs internally and C-clips on them. So there's a lot more going on. They're more complex. 
and the lockup is far worse. So the lockup idea here is you have a taper up front, Acme threads, and then your locking ring. Now the locking ring has these little teeth on the top that should in theory match up with the teeth on the bottom of the adapter. Uh, the problem is that they don't all the times, depending on what muzzle device you're running, depending on what adapters you're running. Some of these will work with some of these and vice versa. Some of them won't work with other ones. And on top of that, I have personally had accuracy degradation on certain muzzle devices with certain adapters on certain barrels to the point where it was basically unusable beyond say 400 yards or so. So as far as I'm concerned, the YHM, the old YHM system sucks. Now I know YHM does have a new lineup of suppressor mounts and adapters. I believe they call it their SRX system. I believe Hop just did a very good video on them. The problem with that system is that I don't believe that it's compatible with the plan B, which is automatically going to limit your adapter and muzzle device selection. And of course, it's made by YHM. So personally, I have exactly zero interest in side grading to something like the SRX, which may in theory be fine. But again, the variety of mounts, adapters, muzzle devices for reared in plan B or any plan B system is going to be far greater and probably higher quality as well than what you're going to find from YHM. And now just for fun, we have one more mounting system to talk about. This is the Griffin Armament Dual Lock. This is actually pin and weldable to a 14.5. This is their 2.2 inch muzzle device, three prong, of course, very little pinging noise. I've used these for quite a bit on the uh, Mark One that they sent out for review. What well, is big, heavy and complex like the YHM system? It's basically that, but just done right. So of course, this is their three prong version in their dual lock line. They have a lot of different muzzle devices, shorter, longer, so on and so forth. This is their 2.25 inch muzzle device, which actually means that it is pin and weldable to four, from a 14.5 barrel to 16 plus inches if you did want to do that. Starting out out front, we have our taper, followed by Acme threads, followed by this teeth section, toothed section, however you say that, which locks into the adapter. Now getting into the adapter, we have the internal taper, of course, followed by Acme threads, followed by these little teeth and this rotating locking ring. It is not a ratcheting ring, but it is a locking ring. So the way that this works is you can actually push this down to the neutral position, just like that. On the inside, you can see that there's a little detent that can fit either to the left or right. Currently in the middle, it is in the neutral position, which is how you want to install it. The way that it installs is of course very simple. You have your taper and your locking threads. I wonder if I can actually do this by hand. Perfect. And then you have the teeth on the inside of the muzzle device, and then you have the teeth on the outside of your locking ring, and then you simply swap it in like that, and those teeth lock up. There is no metal on metal ratcheting. There is no moving parts once it's installed. Those teeth simply hold together and make sure that it is locked onto the taper and can never move. It is steel on steel contact. Those will never shift ever to remove. Simply push the locking ring out of the way and back into the neutral position, just like that. And you can install it or uninstall it. And of course, to get it into position, simply lock it in place and it is 100% locked and can never move. The problem with the YHM system, is again that the teeth on the ratcheting system do not always match up with the adapter so your mileage will vary and of course they can actually move a little bit if they don't lock up perfectly whereas the griffin armament dual lock can never move so even though it's very similar in terms of taper lock acme thread and then a locking ring the locking ring is actually designed in a way that will not allow it to shift so if you're more concerned with um, the suppressor never accidentally moving, the Griffin dual lock is a good way to go. Now again, while this is a very, very stable system, again, it will never move on you once it's installed. The downside is that it's big, heavy, and complex. However, in terms of security, I don't know if you can get much more secure than that. Again, I still haven't had an issue with the Plan B system. It's far cheaper, it's far lighter, it's far smaller as well, and also has a great seal on the taper. And again, I haven't had any issues with it coming loose, unlike the YHM system. So that about does it for my thoughts and experiences on the Reardon Plan B system and really the whole Plan B ecosystem. I think that in general, you're getting some of the most cost effective comparatively. You're getting some of the lightest, smallest, trimmest suppressor mounts and adapters possible with a wide variety of aftermarket solutions. And you can find a tailor-made muzzle device that's going to fit your specific build, your specific set of circumstances, 
basically perfectly. Now, of course, as any suppressor mounting system, it's not perfect. There are trade-offs that you're making. Is it necessarily the most robust or locked on system possible? I don't think so. However, for probably 99.9% .9 of people, it's going to be more than enough. On top of that, again, depending on your specific setup, you're getting very minimal to almost no point of impact shift with a suppressor on or off. Though again, keep in mind, there's going to be a wide amount of variety depending on your specific setup. Now, in my opinion, it is undoubtedly one of the simplest suppressor attachment systems. It's incredibly cost effective compared to some other options on the market. And again, it works very well. So I don't really have any issues with the Reardon Plan B system or really any Plan B mounts or adapters out there. Though again, keep in mind, I haven't tested all of them. However, as far as my money goes, because of what I do as a YouTuber, so I can't necessarily just do direct thread on everything if I need to be using different suppressors on different guns on the same range session. So for me, Reardon Plan B works perfectly, but if you're looking for just a one and done stop, the rec thread is probably still the way to go, but nobody wants to do that. But with all that out of the way, guys, I do want to say thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. I will see you in the next one. Peace off.